Next news is out of Britain, a Christian, okay, Christian persecution is at near genocide levels. According to a report ordered by Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt, the persecution of Christians in parts of the world is near genocide levels. The review, led by Bishop of Truro, the Right Reverend Philip Mountain Stephen, estimated that one in three people suffer from religious persecution. Christians were among the most persecuted religious group it found. Mr. Hunt said he felt that political correctness had played a part in the issue not being confronted. Um, he warned that religion is at risk of disappearing in some parts of the world, pointing to figures which claimed Christians in Palestine uh, Palestine represent less than 1.5% of the population, while in Iraq they had fallen from 1.5 million before 2003 to less than 120,000. The review is due to publish its final findings in the summer. And, and is this, what, okay, is this an actual real study or is this a Christian organization or something? Uh, well, um, this is an actual real study. So when genocide um, levels, really genocide levels, is that actually true? I mean, I know Christians have it bad in some countries like in Palestine or in Egypt or in Saudi Arabia or in Iran, but right. genocide level, is that true? Uh, I, I do want I do want to point out that this, um, while this was, you know, paid for this, the founding for this, research was paid for by the foreign secretary jeremy hunt uh the person who led this was a bishop um that doesn't okay but just to be clear we're not saying that that's proof that this study is wrong no i mean i'm does, not saying that but it does i'm just saying reflect, yeah. that the I, I point out bias if yeah. you know if there's a chance for bias it's what every you know researcher needs to understand um you know when whenever people do these research projects you have to keep in mind does this person who's performing this research right now do they have a point they want to prove um i mean so what are I, these genocides that they we like we're not hearing of like what genocide are they speaking of like it's it, it makes me like, are we reading this wrong? Because you go from saying that this is genocide level, and then he talks about political correctness. Like, okay, yeah, we complain about political correctness as well, but we don't think that's genocide. Like, I It's don't... not genocide. I think that he's trying to call, um, you know, because, and, and I don't know how accurate it is that there were, you know, 1.5 million Christians in Iraq before 2003, um, but that they've fallen, you know, I, are they assuming that they were killed off? Yeah, because they um, moved. You know, did they, you know, did they move? So is that really, yeah. are they, are they trying to call that genocide? No, people ran, people ran away. A lot of the, the numbers went down because a lot of them were like, well, ISIS is taking over. I'm a Christian. I'm out of here. Yeah, but what they're saying, the, the interim report said the main impact of genocidal acts against Christians is exodus and that Christianity faced being wiped out from parts of the Middle Wait, East. Wait, are they talking about like, are they treating Christianity as a person, like as if it's a person when they say genocide? Like maybe they, maybe they saying like, even if you're not killing people, the fact that Christianity is dying in these countries, that's a genocide. Like, are they like just shifting between ideas and people as if it's the same thing? Right, and that, that's what I'm asking you. Like, huh. are they trying to actually say that there were 1.5 million people and now they're less than 120,000 because they were killed? Or are they trying to say that it's just Christianity that is dying off in these areas? Which, again, like you mentioned, it's not they're dying off, it's just no, these people are moving away. Yeah, I mean, that's all. It's not like this is not a prob problematic issue. Yeah, okay, Christians having to run away. It's a it's a problem. That's a human human rights crisis. But it's not genocide, right? It's not that's... And if you read this article, genocide is riddled all through here. Really? Yeah. I mean, they are defining genocide the same way white supremacists define geno white genocide. You know what I mean? Oh my god, this video is going to get flagged by YouTube, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> but but you know how some white supremacists think like, oh, the white race, we're getting mixed with other people, and that's why genocide. Uh, like, 
No, it's not. It's not genocide if nobody's that's killing. Not if, if, if that's not genocide, okay? And I and I think this guy is just defining genocide the same way those other people define genocide. But the weird thing to me is that this is a BBC article, right? And it's not the headline is not that you know somebody is claiming that Christians are the most persecuted group. It's just that's just the title. Christians are most persecuted group, like as if BBC is confirming this. I mean, if this was, if this claims of genocide was coming from a white supremacist saying the same, using the word genocide for how the white race was being treated, BBC, like, people would be like, this is white supremacist propaganda. But when Christians are saying this, I mean, I'm not, okay, again, I don't know if this study is true. Please, somebody tell us, but it just seems like bullshit to me right now. I'm happy to be corrected. I mean, look at the cover. The cover is a statue of Mother Mary being broken, right? Which shows anti-Christian sentiments in countries like Iraq, for example. But it's not a picture of some graveyard or something. Right. You know what I mean? Which right. would be what you get from a genocide. Again, we're not saying the way Christians are treated is okay. Okay? We're not saying it's hunky-dory and Christians are having... Yes, Christians are being prosecuted in these countries. And that's a problem. But it doesn't help your cause when you exaggerate and say it's a genocide. Again, we might be wrong. But if we are wrong, there's a whole bunch of genocide that has happened that we completely missed out on. Because... Like, what happened in Rwanda, for example, that was genocide, okay? And, you know, we know we know that happened. But if a whole bunch of stuff like Rwanda happened to Christians, and we missed it, then, like, I don't, I don't think we missed it. I think this guy is just exaggerating, and that's a shame that it's being... If, that, if he's exaggerating, it's such a shame that this is, is being passed as a scientific study... And not only that, BBC is publishing it with a headline that is as if it's confirming it. If all of this is sh bullshit, I'm, this is so sad. And it actually is sad for Christians because when you exaggerate a problem, it hurts fighting that problem. Daniel is saying, you could call that ethnic cleansing. Call what ethnic cleansing? You, are you talking about white people being mixed with other races? Uh, God, Godless heathen is saying maybe they're talking about cultural genocide. Okay, if but th but then call but then if you call so don't use it if if that's what you mean don't use the word genocide. Okay, because genocide is a is a f phrase we use for some of the most horrific things that happens in 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 our history. And the power of that word needs to remain. Okay, we use it for... Genocide is the term we use. I'm, I'm not saying, by the way, Godless Heathen is agreeing with this. He's just saying maybe that's what they mean, okay? First of all, there's two, there's two problems for that. If you're talking about cultural genocide, then the fact that you didn't mention cultural genocide and you just said genocide, that's already a huge red flag. But even if you just mean cultural, the death of a culture or, or an identity... Don't use the word genocide next to that because we are going to lose the power of raising the alarm when actual genocide happens. Okay? It's the same problem when people just go around and call everybody that they don't like a racist. Because we used to be able to use the word racist against people that are actually racist and that would be a, that would be a powerful way of identifying a problem. Now it doesn't have that power anymore. So if now you're using the word genocide and things that are not genocide, it's going to be harder for us to point to actual fucking genocide. Uh, Sopam is saying this study seems awfully biased. It does seem like that, but we're, we, but we're open to be corrected if, if it's not. But if it's a true study, then holy shit, we messed out a whole bunch of genocides that we never got covered in the news. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. 
In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.